Hi, I'm David King. Welcome to the Flabcast. Uh, as always, I'm joined by Katie Cusack, and today we have Jean Remy R- Monet. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, great. It's fantastic. Oh, did I screw it up? <laughs> no, no, no you didn't. Oh, no, did. we're perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you said it. He's been to Quebec. French so. class really He's paid been off. <laughs> it's authentic. It's authentic Quebec. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> thank you, Albany Academy, for that field trip mm. that uh, prepared me for this moment. Um, but uh, so we're really happy to have you. Um, the the upstate, uh, the Black Theater troupe of upstate New York um, has quite a reputation. A lot of our guests have talked about it, mentioned your work, and wanted to work with you. Um, and I know you've got a few productions coming up. But um, I was really hoping to talk about what brought you here um, <laughs> from New York and why you um, decided this was something you were going to dedicate your time to. Hmm. Uh, well, thank you, uh, David and Kate. And I, I, I just want to say, every time I watch you guys, I'm like, I'm watching you too. You guys are so, like, cool and relaxed. <laughs> I'm going to say, you make people feel so comfortable. I said, this is the kind of person I want to sit down and talk to. Mm. I always think There's that. nothing it's, awkward no, about us. No, nothing, really. Just, no, seriously. And, and, and uh, but when I sent the press release and David, you know, uh, emailed back and like to meet, I said, "Okay, this is cool." Yeah, I couldn't wait to be here. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, um, but thank you. Uh, yeah. well, thank you. I um, originally I'm from Haiti, mm-hmm. so I've been performing acting since I was like nine years old in French and Creole, and I performed in Montreal when I was younger too. Uh, younger, I meaning not eight, maybe. Yeah you know, uh, 20 or something. <laughs> so, uh, and then I moved to New York in the 80s, and then um, I stopped doing theater for a while because I didn't speak the language, <laughs> so, oh, you know, yeah. didn't speak the language, and uh, it was tough. It was like starting over, all over yeah. again. So, uh, I went to school and college in New York City, and then, uh, and then I decided, I took off theater for uh, a few years, and then I decided, you know what, I need to start my life again to do exactly what I, you know, yeah. in my theater, to my dream and stuff. So, so I moved, I started working for the state in 1988, mm-hmm. and I just retired last year. Oh, congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, after 30 years. But I moved out here from New York City in 97. Mm-hmm. And then I went back to Schenectady Community College into performing arts, and I wanted to be more comfortable with the English yeah. language to perform. And then, and then I started, you know, my first big play at Hubbard Hall in Cambridge with Kevin Maguire. Yeah, who was the artistic director there. And then uh, I stayed with him for a couple of years because I wasn't confident enough to be out there to perform because I'm still thinking nobody's going to cast me, you know, with, uh, you know, with my accent and all, and all stuff. So. Sure. But I didn't let that stop me, and then I went, you know, uh, and uh, auditioned and started performing in every theater in the capital region in like around 2000, 2001 and two. And then by 2009, you know, I was already all over the place in New Paltz, and and, and oh, I yeah. took every small part without trying to build, you know, uh, something, trying to build a resume, you know. And also trying to prove to people to say I couldn't do it because of my accent. I wasn't going to get cast because right. of my accent. To prove to myself too, that I can do it. <laughs> That's me. You're like, hi, I speak three languages. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. And a little bit of Spanish, but oh, I can nice. read Spanish. But uh, <laughs> And uh, yeah, and then in 2009, I was having a lot of fun and then realized that, okay, you know, um, something is not right. Okay, mm-hmm. you know, there was like one, two, three black actors, people of color in the state, local stage. So I, uh, a friend of mine back in 2009 decided to start, you know, the Soul Rebel Performance Troupe. Mm-hmm. And then back in 2009, and then, you know, so, you know, we started it so we can bring more people of color, you know, work with them and bring them in. And in two, and in 2010, it was dissolved, and I started it again by myself, and still as the Soul Rebel performance troupe. Then to jump ahead, in 2000, two years, two years ago, 
decided to change the name to the Black Theater Troupe of Upstate New York. Mm. So by then, we've already worked with a lot of people of color, not just black, and, and also very diverse too, because we try to work with everybody, but mostly focusing on bringing more people of color in the local stage. And since then, and uh, we've worked with a lot of you know, uh, people, you know, black actors, Hispanic actors, who's out there now doing their things, who has never done theater before when right. they started with me. And uh, uh, things are much better. I'm not taking all the credit because the mm-hmm. other group put a lot of people there. But with what we've been doing, that's 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 that was the idea to work with. I meet people every day. I hold their hand and show them how to do it. And <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, and I do believe that uh, it's more diverse now. You know, partly because of what we've been doing. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, so what kind of reception did you first get from uh, the? places where you'd stage these plays or the, the, what would you need to do to get support to, to actually put put, the, put these works on and, and was it a struggle at first or I mean have you found, found there was support from institutions or you know I we I spent spent years when we started and uh, we weren't getting a lot of support financial support and we did you know it was mostly we weren't doing a lot of big shows you know we started doing you know reading you know, stage reading in libraries mm-hmm. at, the, at the beginning, doing in a variety shows. Right. We've worked with uh, Sand Lake Center at the beginning mm-hmm. and provide space for us in Avril Park. And then uh, we work in small places and cafes. It was mostly with a few dollars I was getting from work. I was spending my right. own money yeah. all those years, you know, for a long time. And uh, uh, until we started to really collaborate with you know a bigger you know uh, organizations and work I work with Siena College and Sage College and Schenectady Community College, and uh, you know uh, yeah but that's mostly we do shows shows with little that we make from each uh, event and then we save that for the next show. So it, it wasn't until recently we started you know getting you know uh, some grant and. Um, small grant for uh, a summer production we did this past summer, Yours for the Oppress, mm-hmm. with work with Siena College and the Underground Railroad. And then now we have people now, uh, you know, uh, grant writers that's helping mm. us. Yeah. But, yeah, but until now, and uh, yeah, we haven't received, you know, any kind of help from, from anybody. Right. But I didn't want to give up because I said, okay, this is the dream. I'm doing it for a reason because things got to change yeah you know, and, you know, and the stage has to be more colorful that's what i would yeah. say <laughs> like reflective of <laughs> right, right. people who you want to be coming to see these shows. right exactly yeah yeah uh, you know and then not I, I wasn't out there looking for just you know people of color to be on stage but i have was out there every day to talk to people, come to support, and mm. because the audience, most time you know, when you see a show, even if it's an all black show, 95% of the audience is white. Mm. So we need to educate other people of color too, to be out, come see plays. I mean, they come mm. out. If Tyler Perry comes come, comes here, you know, they all come out. So they need to support, you know, that, you know us that's trying to make something better. Sure, them, like you know. smaller right. theaters and, and becoming familiar with right like small stage small, things exactly, that yes. aren't necessarily people who are going to be selling out like the times union or something <laughs> right, yeah. which is like yeah. a huge problem for everyone, for everyone <laughs> yeah. in it's, like so many art forms right. but yeah i mean there's but it's hard to make people understand like the mo- that moment when you get there and you're experiencing something on that right. small scale and you're like with this community and it feels like way more powerful than you would right, feel right. when you're like in an arena seeing somebody that's so far away like right it, how do you communicate that to someone you know <laughs> right, that yeah. it's going to be so much more fun for them right, exactly. <laughs> and it's getting it's you know i'm saying all that you know i have to say it, it is getting better yeah. too uh you know uh, since we've been doing more shows in albany and uh, our audience is getting, you know, bigger, you know, more diverse, right. you know, more people have com- are coming out, and and uh, but it takes time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going anywhere. I retired. Yeah. I'm doing this full time, and I'm out every day. Yeah. You know, trying to get the right people to work with, you know, other producers and directors, and 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 you know. So, yeah. Yeah. 
one of the uh, you know this issue uh, just just hit the stands. Go get it. Um, <laughs> has a has a feature about um, sort of the wealth of small theater in the area and looks at sort of how it sustains itself and how how come uh, how this area supports so many small theaters um, and or troops at least. Right. Um, What's your thought on that? I mean, ha there's a lot of theater in the area. I mean, obviously, it's it's a wide geographic area that the capital region um, right. encompasses. But um, is it supportive? Do you, do you are you able to work together, or do you find yourself sort of as an island doing your own thing? Or is it the same pool of people that you that you're able to work with? Or no, actually, especially me. Okay, from yeah. the beginning, I was out to work with the community, different yeah. theaters, and different organization. Um, um, it's, I'm not, you know, you know, by myself, we're not by myself. We work with uh, Sand Lake, we work with Sage College, Call Us Collaborate, right. we work, you know, with uh, Schenectady Civics, and, and, uh, and uh, we also work with non theater organization, you know, every year, like the PLS. It's an organization, uh, Prisoners Legal Services of mm -hmm. New York, mm -hmm. and I work with them it, once once a month. They get to work from incarcerated individuals, written materials, and you know, there's a certain theme every year, and I get actors to perform those work. Yeah. And then and uh, and and no and uh, uh, and I think for me personally, we get a lot of support mm -hmm. from the other theaters and uh, uh, locally. I mean, I'm. And um, you have Confetti Stage, which out to me to direct a show mm -hmm. for them for Black History Month, which is coming up in December. So, you know, yeah, we do get, uh, I don't know, I can't talk for other group, mm -hmm. but for me, I know that it's been, you know, it's been good working with the different communities. And, and, and no, uh, we have aud auditions for when we're doing shows. It's yeah. not a group of people to do everything. Right, right. So because we have to do that, you know, working with new actors. I meet people every day who've never done theater before. They say, "Oh, I'd like to be part of it," you know, and and uh, whether to be in the crew to help do uh, sound and, and and music to you know to be to the costumes and and uh, but I meet people every day and I work with them and I get, work with them to get the experience. So yeah. it's uh, every show just like any regular community theater. We have new right. bringing new actors. Yeah. yeah. I mean, for people who want to kind of get to know who you are as like a troop, I mean, how many people um, do you kind of keep track of? Are people kind of like coming in and out for shows or is there kind of a general group of people who make up like the central team of the troop? Uh, no, we have people coming in and out. Okay. Yeah, we, we have new people. Um, yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. If after the show you say you're interested, <laughs> and then next thing I know, yeah. you could be on the, on the next play. Right. Okay. You know and uh, um, uh, and you have we have new people all the time, but of course mm. a lot of the all the people who, who started with through. us come back all the time. Yeah. We cycle. Sometimes I precast shows depending on the show mm -hmm. it, because it's still hard to find as as much as you know. Uh, the capital rich and the upstate New York get better now. There's more you know people of color right mm -hmm. now, but it's still we still have a way to go. Uh, yeah. So, but many times if I can't cast a show even through audition, I make a phone call to people I've worked before and they're always really very happy to come back. Yeah. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Is that because of the experience in working with you all as a team, or like the stories that you're telling? I mean, what do you think it is that that brings people back specifically to Bec you guys? Uh, I always make sure. Uh, I always make sure whenever I cast a show, uh, I treat actors. I don't treat actors like actors. <laughs> you know, they, I treat actors like you know, you know, uh, a friend, a brother, mm. a sister, like family. Before I cast a show, I always make sure. I party with my actors. Yeah, you know I'm saying. Yeah, let's be friends. Let's be family. If we're rehearsing, things are not going well. I say, you know, we're not rehearsing today. Come to my house. I'll cook and let's get together. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and you know, we're friends. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, if I'm directing the show, I don't want to be a director. I want to say, let's work together and, yeah. and get it done. So if I'm an actor, I'm gonna want to come back all the time. Right. You know, what I'm saying because yeah. you know you feel home. You feel like family. So and that's and like invested in as well. Right. Yeah. So 
Uh, I mean, I can tell you now, unless somebody's not available, people I've worked before, you know, black, white, or Hispanic, any race, then I can, you know, um, call them and say, hey, how are you available? I have a part for you, you know, I, yeah. I, I'd like you to be part of it or something. You know, um, they usually pretty, you know, uh, glad yeah. to come back to, and to work with me. And yeah, and I, you know, and I like, I respect people, I like to work with people respect themselves, respect other people, and, you know, and uh, um, so it could be a yeah. team and family. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a really good feeling. Yeah, so. yeah, definitely it is, yeah. Mm. Uh. So <laughs> you've got the nice cities right. coming up, and tell us a little bit about, about um, the preparation for a show, what it might be like before you, you put it on, and, and why are you doing this? Uh, uh, well, now? most shows we do, uh, Unlike other community theater, you put on any play, as long yeah. as it's a comedy mm. or a story, <clears throat> it's fun to play. But I do meaningful work, a mm-hmm. place that, you know, educate people, you know, plays about our stories, you know, uh, you know uh, struggles, you know, with, you know, uh, the people of color and, 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 and racism and uh, injustice and stuff and, 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 and or any family plays and things that when you go, you learn something that you don't, they don't teach you in school, mm. okay? And uh, the nice city is, you know, it's, it's, when you sit down, you watch that it's a two character play that you're going to learn so much from that, you know, but, you know, uh, just having the two people uh, having the conversation about uh, American Revolution, you know, slavery and racism. And it is so deep, so powerful. When you sit there, you're going to want to be part of it. Yeah. (laughs) So that's, you know, I like to do plays like this. We have a play coming up called Camp Logan. It's about, uh, it's written by a woman from Texas. And this is a story, uh, uh, you know, I don't know if you got Google, if you can Google it, the Houston riot mm-hmm. in 1917, where there was black soldiers in, 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 in Houston, te- Texas, that was there on training mm-hmm. to go to the war in 1917. Yeah. And then they were being harassed and by local white, and there was a riot, and then they ended up hanging 20 black soldiers. So this is stories that you don't, you never heard of, right. and the play is written based on that. You know, uh, not not to jump <clears throat> too far away from this, but right. um, the one of the best shows I think of the last year was Watchmen, which was based on the, the Tulsa, the Tulsa, mm-hmm. the, the the Greenwood uh, uh, um, yeah. massacre. Yeah. yeah, I have the I have a play written by the same woman. I have that play right now, and I might be going to New York City to see a reading of it. I'm planning to do that play. I never watch. Nice. I never see Watchmen. Somebody mentioned that that they talk about it there. Well, this is the yeah, story you don't hear. From, well, well, exactly. Yeah. And I think that if it does anything, um, right. you know, it, it's that it brings that right. that moment in history back into the public consciousness. Right, even though right. it might not have, probably was never there for most people. Right. Um, yeah. And mm-hmm. some people might think it's fiction because right. of how exactly. disturbing yeah, right. and horrible yeah. and you know. But it's yeah. This is the kind of story that I like to bring. You know, to bring out to educate people. Yeah. And uh, uh, at the same time, you educate people. Whether it's about racism, whatever it is, but positive things, and, and then usually we have a talk back, and uh, mm. yeah, uh, nice. I need to start wa- you know watching, watch me, yeah. <laughs> watch, you know, it's, you, know <laughs> you know, it's true because everybody tell me about it, you know, yeah, just, yeah, you know, yeah. So you know. <laughs> I know I, he got me watching it. Was, there, there's one oh, episode no, in particular that right. that I thought was just absolutely right. the most profound, subversive, and right. challenging. Uh, episode of television I've seen yeah. in a long time. Yeah. The whole show itself is pretty decent, but that right. one episode yeah. uh, really mm. does a lot to comment on right. racial violence and history. Yeah, and, and I mean, they they just for simple, you know, accusation, you know, of the black teen, and they ended up burning. It was a, right. it used to be called, it was such a rich town, owned, yeah. business owned by blacks. Mm-hmm. They used to call it the Black Wall Street. Yep. Mm-hmm. They burned down the whole town and killed, you know, and people and burned down the whole town. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. So the, the premise is essentially that right. uh, it sort of parallels how Superman is is <laughs> a, a guy who leaves his burning is shipped away from his you know burning right, planet right. and then becomes a savior and right. in the way that this <laughs> you know a, 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 like it sort of says that the only Truly heroic and uh, you know super heroic right. sort of person it, that that could be alive is a, is a black person who's suffered these immense right. and seen their people destroyed and then 
has to deal with this and constantly is tested by the, the system that doesn't. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, I thought it was profound that mainstream television could put forward. I'm glad you're watching, a, I'm glad yeah. that. <laughs> I was hoping when, you know, if they, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, let's sense, especially since they hide those stories, they yeah. tell yeah. you that, you know, if more television will put that out there. And yeah. I think, you know, it's even better than training it in school because. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I don't know how many times I do stories that, um, a play about those kind of stories that actors, black actors, and you know, and whites, and come to me and say, "Thank you for bringing these stories up. People yeah. never heard of it." Absolutely. It, you know. Uh, well, and, uh, I mean, our, our area, and, and uh, obviously, you've you've done work um, around the history of the area, but the, you know, the, the the underground, and you know, the, right. all the, the we have an amazing amount of history relating to that and escape, helping slaves escape and and I just saw Harriet last night. Yeah, oh, I'd like to see that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Um, as uh, I've heard mixed reviews. What do you think? Um, uh, I had a little issue, a little mm-hmm. bit. The story itself is okay, but uh, yeah, the story itself is. Great. Great, but there's a lot of things. I said, no, that can't be real. You know, you know right. that can't be real. And uh, and I'm pretty sure too. The other thing I was kind of, you know, there's one of the slave catchers. Also, I don't know. I always have a problem with that. One of them is a black man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't want to since you haven't seen yeah. it. I say, okay, did that really happen? Yeah. You know, but then again, I'm thinking this might be possible because. If you know you're a slave yourself, and then the master say, "I'm giving you three hundred dollars to bring," you know, right. and I can see how somebody, you know, if you you know want to betray their own, just like Jesus and his disciple, and then right. somebody did, uh, yeah. uh, you know, um, betrayed him. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's I think it was kind of how do I describe that too clean for me. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? I, yeah, I'm glad you all agree. I think it was kind of too clean for me. For yeah, uh, yeah. Well, I think there is that, you know, there's the other side of that. There is this thing now where if you're going to get any movie made, it has to have some sort of like heroic, right, yeah. uh, you know, idealist sort of thing because they're, they people they know people want heroes because right, that's what right, sells right. at the box office. So <laughs> yeah. if, it, if it's too complicated, they don't think people are going to follow. Right. Or they, and I do know, understand, you know, but, they have to make it because, you know, it's, it's got to look good. I mean, I mean, they tell you, you know, the, the story. That's what happened. Right. But... You know, but if you it's embellished, okay. yeah, <laughs> you, they have to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, and and I kind of like that myself because you know I'm one of those people, and uh, uh, I like a good ending. You yeah, know, if you are being <laughs> mistreated and abused, mm-hmm. and then at the end you ended up, you know, the killer, the abuser got away, nothing happened to them. <laughs> you know, say no. That's, so That's why for a hero movie to me because. I like at the, I like what she did at the end where you know almost at the end where the main person that was after her you know uh, she didn't kill him mm. okay she just shot him on and they leave him in the desert somewhere right. and, and give, teach him a lesson to learn and you know people are not meant to own other people I think mm. that's the line he tell he told her, her she told him at the end, yeah. and then that's you know that's something I will do. I'm one of you know I like to educate more than being mad at somebody. If right. somebody does something to me, and I think it's because you're ignorant, you know, because you don't know any better. I'd rather sit down with you and teach you, and uh, and done punching you. Yeah, <laughs> really. <Right. laughs> but if I'm watching a movie, I like a good hero movie. You right. get the good revenge at the end. Too. <laughs> yeah. <You> know, so <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, yes, but I will definitely, there's mm-hmm. some action in there too, and then some good story you need to learn, because I've done many plays with that, about right. Harriet Tubman myself. Oh, wait. Right. Yeah, so, so so I needed to see. Yeah, <laughs> you needed to yeah. do some comparison. Right, yeah. No, but uh, it's good that, um, you know, you're using your plays to, right. to really... Yeah, show these kinds of stories and and also like I'm sure in those cases the talkbacks are super valuable as well. Very. Sometimes it's even, sometimes it's even you know I'm not saying it's even better, but it's as good as the show right. the talkback because yeah. you know uh, and and uh, I mean, you know I mean I'm saying that myself I'm doing it to educate people. I learned most of my history through theater. 
because mm. I do a lot of research and 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 I'm one of those people who would like to you know uh, uh, you know uh, against injustice and and also want to fight it you know and, yeah. and, and but I do it through my theater and myself if I choose a play I know I have to do a lot of research so I learn it I knew I knew Haitian history but when mm. I came here I didn't know a lot about American history right. so I and I didn't learn a lot of it in school so I so I I learn it and teach people through theater and uh, yeah. and uh, um, yeah so it's very important <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. I mean it's clearly been something that has been a part of your life since you were right really young so it's like resonates. part of my life since I was young and also being also a victim through the uh, the Haitian, you know, the baby dog, Papa dog dictatorship in Haiti. Yeah. I lived through that. Wow. Okay, I right. lived through that. With it's, it wasn't racism, but it was, you know, injustice oppression. and you know, yeah. yeah, oppression. So I lived through that. And from the time I was a child, I was arrested myself, and um, for nothing, just because I was speaking <laughs> my mind as a child, as a young yeah. girl, you know. And but I was lucky. I had people who had connection had to get me out and until I came here to meet my parents you know uh, and you know and coming here and now it was a different kind of uh, you know struggle that I had to deal with with racism and and learning a new language to, to so I so yeah so it hasn't right. been easy so when you know I started working for the state for 30 years I was and then I evening part-time I was doing theater and now yeah. I would tie doing it full-time and you know, I'm more, you know, now I have more energy now, more motivation now to continue yeah. doing, to continue doing it. You know, it's, it's, it's personal and a personal, you know, uh, and and I wanted to use that to 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 train, to to educate, to bring it out there. Yeah. And you know, it it will help in a little. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, and what's so obviously you have you have a lineup for for, for some time now but um how would you suggest folks uh get involved um just show up for an audition um yes uh uh we doing audition more and more now at the beginning we weren't doing a lot of audition because the kind of play that we do i was meeting people every day yeah. and and we were doing audition people weren't coming out Mm -hmm. from the beginning mm. mainly mainly because if i'm doing a play for people of color for black people and mm -hmm. hispanic and then they don't have the experience they've never mm -hmm. been through an audition before they you know a lot of them are really get intimidated yeah, and, oh no absolutely. i'm not an actor. i'm never done i'm not gonna go out so i was doing a lot of you know calling people just cast people yeah. precast people i like, talk to you i i don't really don't believe in audition Mm -hmm. Especially with people who don't have a lot of experience, mm -hmm. because how are you going to put somebody up there to audition them when you know? Go. Oh, you know <laughs> okay. what I'm saying? So no, my audition for me, let's sit down and have a conversation, okay, and then find out who you know, who, you know, uh, your personality, who you are, the kind of person you are, and mm -hmm. learn about you, and 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 I can easily tell, okay, what I can put you in, yeah. you know, by just you know, get to know you. And uh, because I don't care if somebody is very talented, also, but if you don't have a great personality, I'm, I don't <laughs> want to work with you. I don't want to work with somebody who has great personality, less mm. talent, less experience. I can work with you. Yeah. So, uh, um, but now that it's different, now there's more you know actors out there. So we uh, we uh, we have our website, the Black Theater Troupe mm -hmm. of Upstate New York, you know, uh, Facebook. We'll be posting there for auditions, yep. and then we're gonna be using the cap disc things. And oh yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, and and uh, you know, Patrick White directed a show for uh, uh, a few months ago. Miss Martha Washington, mm -hmm. and there was auditions. A lot of people came out, and a lot of them are actors that we worked with before. Yeah. And uh, Aaron Moore was in your show recently. Was in it. It was great. I love mm -hmm. Aaron. So. Uh, <laughs> So, yeah, so it's getting better people coming out now because we have more people who don't mind coming to audition. But yeah. if you don't have the experience and we have audition and or you know if you don't if you're shy, you're afraid, just call me and say, you know, I I'd like to be part of it, you know, but I 
don't like to audition, <laughs> I can talk. If you don't know where to start, <clears throat> right? Yeah. I, yeah, I, I'll work with you. You don't need to come to audition if you are afraid because I don't want to do that to people. Yeah. Okay. Just come and we'll sit down and talk, and then you know we'll do something. I yeah. bolted my theater class in uh, in college. <laughs> Uh, like do, now, now do a mirror face with your partner, and I'm like, no, no, I can't do that to anyone. Yeah, I'm yeah. Someone mentioned that the mirror things. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, yeah, no, I make it comfortable for people, and uh, and and let's just talk. I have, I'm getting called, you know, every day on email, every day from parents who the child want to be part of this and. I say, okay, let's get together. Or I invite them, come watch rehearsal. Yeah. Like, if you've never done it before, sometimes I say, okay, start going out to the local theater community and see some plays and mm-hmm. bring your child to see plays. It's very important. It's, you know, and you can't ask them to play soccer if they never, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. you've never seen a soccer <laughs> game on television or something and, or knows about it. So, yeah, start taking them out and I invite them, come watch rehearsal when I'm having rehearsal. And, or I meet with them, have coffee somewhere. And, uh, and and it's been it's been really good, uh, uh, mm. especially since I retired. A lot of doors have opened up, giving more time to focus yeah, on that. Yeah, absolutely. And getting people get sending me plays from all over, from London. Play, you know, they know what we do. Excellent. And and uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and where should uh, w- what what's the schedule? Uh, where can people see the niceties? The niceties. Uh, I'm so excited about this play. Uh, I have two great actors, you know, uh, Monet Thompson and uh, uh, and uh, Christina Reeves, and uh, it's a um, it's a white professor, and uh, in her early 60s. But Christina is nowhere close to 60, of course. <laughs> no. uh, and uh, and a black student in a, in, a, in the professor's office talking mm-hmm. about the American. Uh, Talking about a sample project, her paper, and then the whole thing right. turns, you know, turns to dip into American Revolution, slavery, and racism. It's really powerful. That's going to be at Siena College, and uh, January twenty third, at four performances: the twenty third, twenty fourth, twenty fifth, and twenty sixth nice. um, at the um, F- Foy Hall Theater. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, at Siena College. And you have to go on the website, their website. It's posting on Facebook and on, on, on our website and the Siena website. And people, you know, can just show up too. <laughs> right. Because that happened a lot because I'm pretty sure a lot of people was not. Because there's yeah. no phone number you can call. Mm. It's only a link. You click to make reservation. Okay. But I yeah. know a lot of people usually just show up, hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully, uh, yeah, people come out and it's full. Yeah. Do we do well? Yeah. So. And what do you expect for the rest of the year? Do you have a lineup yet? Do you have a? Yes. Uh, me, after I'm directing uh, the nice it is, and then I'm, we also working with Sage College in of Albany. We're doing a stage reading for Black History Month. It's only a one performance, February seven. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's my birthday. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. Really? I don't know birthday. why I had to say that. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 but it's your birthday, of course. Yeah. You see, you heard it. Right. Okay. Uh, <laughs> you heard it. You heard it here first. Mail gifts to proctor. <laughs> That's right. Uh, yeah, February seven. In a at uh, Sage of Albany, mm-hmm. we're doing a stage reading. Of, uh, of but also another play that you know stories that they don't really tell you about it. It's it's called the meeting. Mm-hmm. The meeting. It's a sort of uh, uh, Malcolm X meeting with Martin Luther King. Oh wow! Yeah, it's powerful. <laughs> so mm-hmm. uh, so we're doing a stage reading of that in February, and then a full production of it in June uh, at the Albany. And at the Albany Museum Institute of Art okay, yep. nice. in Washington Ave. Mm-hmm. So they actually reach out to me. They say, you know, I've I've been following you. I was, you know, I watch oh, what nice. you do. I'd like to host one of your shows. So we're doing uh, th- four performances there. Excellent. But our big production will be Camp Logan that I yep. mentioned earlier. Will be the first two weekend of April, mm. and then um, so 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 we we busy. We have uh, nice cities, and then. Uh, and um, and the meeting in February and and Camp Logan in April, and then the meeting again in June, mm-hmm. and 
I'm directing the mountain tap for uh, not with the black theater troupe. I'm yeah. the mountain tap with a confetti stage. Mm -hmm. nice. That's gonna be the, uh, the last uh, February for Black History Month, February 28, 29, and March 1st. And uh, I don't know if you know the story, Mountain Tap about uh, uh, about Martin Luther King. It's okay. like the day before you die, and uh, and uh, we tell you about yeah. that story. It's really you know, and <laughs> also powerful stuff. So yeah. Uh, so I really don't have time to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, for taking the time to talk to us because yeah. it isn't. It's amazing that you're you're able to. Right. No. I don't know what I'm doing in June. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I it's 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 uh, it's hard not. Uh, I can't. You know, I I really because of you know not only um when I'm not directing, I'm producing. You know. Yeah. Okay. And I run the theater company. We have a board and. And also because since I retired now, and I just uh, uh, recently formed a production team, mm -hmm. you know, black theater troupe production team. So yeah. a total of ten people just had our first meeting. Nice. So, uh, uh, so I can take you know, you know, if a producers, you know, you're producing a show and something happened and 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 you go no way or something happened you get sick the show can move on because we have enough people yeah. in the production team to help so and uh, which is going nice. to help me a lot uh, so yeah excellent <laughs> uh, well thank you so much it was a real pleasure and uh you know i know we're going to be in touch yeah um, and everyone should check out the niceties definitely thank you and uh i mean i know a, a lot of folks we've talked to have, have talked about the work you've put in and and yeah. there are a lot of people that respect what you've you know yeah. you've done so thank you. if people yeah. want to get involved we, we suggest you you know they reach out because it sounds like you're amenable <laughs> i want to thank those people too like i said i've seen many of them in your show here and, <laughs> and uh i love them and you know we work together and they come yeah. back and you know um yeah it's you know, it's not just, I mean, especially if you're not getting paid, but you have to have fun with it. And I try to do, you know, to do all that, you know, yeah. you know and treat you like family and friends. And, and, and which is why when we work with new actors, people come and see you on stage and you think, uh, you've been doing it for 40 years, 20 years, but you just started last week. Yeah. So I want to make sure that, you know. You feel comfortable. You feel comfortable. And if you feel comfortable, you're going to. Uh, do your be best comfortable. Work. Do your best work. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. I hope to see you February seven in your brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you.